a game in which they led wire to wire. The Quinnipiac Bobcats pull off the 12-5 upset, defeating the reigning Big East Conference champion Marquette Golden Eagles 68-65 to record the program's first NCAA tournament win. Mario Hirsch went alongside Sierra Goodwill here in Coral Gables, Florida. Before we break down the game, Sierra, there was a big storyline coming into it. Marquette guard Natisha Heideman said on Monday night when she learned about Quinnipiac, her opponent, she didn't even know who they were. Quinnipiac's a great team. Um, I give them all the credit. They played hard. They had a great first half. Great. They had a great everything. They played, they played with a lot of fight. Um, I, I give them all the credit and I wish them the best luck in the tournament. Really, when it came down to it, um, I just knew I had to be in her stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hands had to be up because uh, we knew we were gonna, she was going to launch it. She's a playmaker. Well, now it's pretty safe to say that Heidemann knows who the Bobcats are. Absolutely. It was a battle between her and fifth-year senior Adelie Martucci for the Bobcats all night long. The biggest play of the game arguably came with 20 seconds left when Heidemann dialed up a three-pointer that would give Marquette their first lead of the game with 20 seconds left. Adelie Martucci said no way, swatted away, saved her season, giving this program the first win in the NCAA tournament. Huge play from the fifth-year guard who guaranteed an NCAA tournament win just a few weeks ago in the MAC tournament. Trisha Fabry, though, knew that her Bobcats had a really good chance this morning after the team shoot-around. And to be honest with you, our shoot-around this morning was the best it's ever been. The laser focus, the, the ready-to-go, um, and, and texted my AD that we're going to be hard to beat today. And that, that's on the record at a text at uh, 9.30 this morning on the bus back. Head coach Trisha Fabry has been doing this for way too long, Sierra, to know that that laser focus and shoot around translates over to the court. Absolutely. And she knew from the beginning of the season that there was something special about this group. She said after the game that this team deserves recognition. They flew under the radar going into the tournament. People were anticipating that Marquette Miami matchup, but she knew she was confident in her team that they were going to make some noise. They were going to surprise some people and they came out hot, unlike that they unlike they've been doing all season long. And she's really established herself as one of the elite coaches on campus, elite coaches in the MAC and at a mid-major program around the country. Quinnipiac led by as many as 19. Marquette made a strong push to that 19, but Quinnipiac made sure that it never relinquished the lead. This team has been so good all year long in tough spots, and there wasn't a tougher spot with a team like Marquette, how they come at you offensively. And not only did they make their push and their run, but we not only defended in the biggest spots, but had the right answer in the clutch spots. And that's what this team has done all season long. Well, Sierra, that's pretty impressive for a team that had never won an NCAA tournament game before today. Absolutely. Quinnipiac wanted to make its statement, and they made it loud early on, jumping out to a 9-0 lead, forcing Marquette to call a timeout early in this one, and then 19-point lead late in the third quarter. Just really dictated pace through and through and proved themselves that they could hang with the best of them. Jen Fay had a game-high 20 points. Trisha Fabry extremely proud of her redshirt sophomore who came back this year after tearing an ACL last year. It's not the first time I've seen a performance by her in, in that nature. She was had it against Temple, um, back off an ACL, uh, and a, a you know completely talented player offensively, great IQ, and you just got to witness firsthand on the big stage just how good she is, talented with the ball, dribbling the left of the court. You saw incredible spin dribble. You saw her ability to pull the three-point shot. Um, when. When we need her the most, she's been really great all season long, and she just wanted the ball all game long. She didn't shy away from the shot. Whether she missed it or it went down, she wanted it, and she made incredible plays for us, for us all evening. We've seen bits and pieces and glimpses from Faye before, but today was the whole package. Faye demanded the ball tonight, and her teammates gave it to her because she was knocking it down from everywhere on the court, showed her versatility, showed how she could control the ball so well. You heard Trisha Fabry talk about that spin dribble move. The bench went nuts. She was the X factor in this game, and she probably will be moving forward into the tournament. Well, on Monday in the round of 32, Quinnipiac takes on the Miami Hurricanes, the host of this little quad down here in Coral Gables. The tip time has yet to be announced. We think it will either be 4.30 p.m. Eastern time or 7 p.m. Eastern time, and the winner going out to Stockton, California in the Sweet 16. 
2019. For all Quinnipiac women's basketball information, make sure you check out our website at www.q30television.com. For my partner, Sierra Goodwill, I'm Mari Hirsch-Gordon. We'll see you on Monday night.